It's Wednesday night and we're talking about something that's the most controversial thing in the Bible because it has to do with predestination. It is the word whosoever will. Whenever one says the word whosoever, it is never in the text. Never in the Greek text. Now, I've given you a piece of paper and it has... Uh, this is the word whosoever as it is in the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. If you will notice, the word whosoever is only defined a few times. It starts off here with Matthew 5 and 19. If it's blank over there, even if it's just one blank, it means there's no word for it. So there's only a few places in the Bible, in the, in the concordance, where it says they got a number for whosoever. But every one of these are actually wrong. And what we're going to do is show you the controversial <laughs> words for whosoever. It begins in Joel, the second chapter. And that's in Joel. Now, what I'm going to show you I'm going to show you a declension. Declension means to decline or be on a slope. Declension. It means to slope downward and it means to decline in a sentence. Now, you can have a declining on a hill, but we're talking about in the Greek language to decline. You start with the subject of the sentence, and then you have the verb, and you will have the predicate. Predicate is what the subject is referring to. Either it will be an action verb, or it will be a being verb. Now, I'm going to have to do a little English teaching for you to understand this. When it's an action verb, it's going to have a direct object. Direct object is the thing in the, in the predicate. Predicate is everything after the subject. It would actually be the entire last part of the sentence. Some people call the verb the predicate, but it would be more than just the verb. It would also be the rest of the sentence would be called the predicate. When you say something is predicated on a particular thing, well, the subject, like Jim, is the pastor. Well, when you have a predicate nominative, P-N, Predicate nominative, let me write that out. Predicate nominative. That would be the thing in the predicate that's equal to the subject. Pastor and Jim are the same thing. Jim is the pastor. Now, if you, that would be a, a being verb. A being verb shows doesn't show any action. It shows presence. Jim is the pastor. The being verbs are be, is, am, are, was, were. I won't put all of them down. Were, being, been, have, has, had, do, does, did, shall, will, should, would, may, might, must, can, could. Those are all the being verbs. I put them on the board so many times. And every one of them are form of the verb to be, to exist. Now, this is very simple. I'm not teaching you college English. I'm giving you ninth grade English through the 11th grade that I learned when I was in junior high and high school. We didn't have middle school back then. We had junior high, 7 through 9, and high school then to 12. Now, a predicate nominative is, 
in the predicate what's equal to the subject. So you've got a subject and a predicate nominative. When you have an action verb, Jim, through the ball. That is the action verb, ball, the ball. The ball. through the ball. Through the ball. <laughs> I'm getting in a hurry. Through the ball. The is an adjective. It's an article. It's a definite article. I'll go ahead and say this because this is very important on what I'm going to say. The is a definite article. In English, we have three articles, the, a, and an. In Greek, there are no indefinite articles. There are none. All there is is the. That's a definite. What about a and an? The context has to say that. It has to imply a or an. When the Bible says in the 20th chapter of Revelation, Satan was bound for a thousand years, that's absolutely wrong in an English Bible. There are no a's. You can't say a, but the, the translators put a in there and they knew better. Probably Roman Catholics did that. The only thing you're looking for, that's very important because when we get to... I don't know where to even begin or quit on this. Jim threw the ball. Throw, throw is an action verb. And the, and the ball is the direct object. When you find out what direct objects are and predicate nominatives, you're going to understand it's not hard to do. Let me go over here. This is the word, the. You've got that on your paper. This is the word, the, in the Greek. The, it's masculine, feminine, neuter. Masculine is male. It'd be a man or a boy. Feminine is female. That's a woman. Every time you have hey, taste, te, tain, it's Mass, it's feminine gender singular. If you got toe to, toe, and toe here, a tie actually, you've got neuter gender in the singular. And the reason I'm going to say this is because usually when you have the word whosoever, most of the time, and you've got it on your paper, it will be pos, pos, ho. The and pos is the word all. If you'll notice, this is a definite article, and when pos ho is used, ho, and where's my pos? It's not on the same page, is it? Nope. Pos. Nope. All right. Pos, and here is pos. Oh, the all. Nearly every time whoever's mentioned, whosoever is mentioned, it is not whosoever, and will is not even, it's not mentioned with it. It's pas ho. And that's what it says in John 3, 16. It does not say whosoever believeth in him. You could look at that. I may just throw some of this at you and let you understand that. Right at the top of word study, whosoever, you got John three sixteen. It, huh? What'd you say? It's on there. Oh, is it on there? Okay. Yeah, let's go back to John three sixteen. You got pos. That's the word all. Right here. This is called a declension. You're going down through the sentence. Here's why it's called. You're declining through the sentence. Let me just show you this. You're declining through the sentence. If it's nominative case, it'll either be, this is how you spell the all through the sentence. If it's at the end of a sentence and it's accusative 
case, it will be the direct object. It'll be Jim through ball. Ball is the direct object. If it's if it is dative case, it will be the indirect object. Jim through John the ball. He's still throwing the ball, but the ball is going to John, the indirect object. So that would be dative case. That's the dative case. Genitive case shows possession. John preached there in Luke 3 and 3. John came preaching the baptism of repentance. Now, when you look up, here's how you're going to find out what it is. You cannot look up in a Strong's Exhaustive Concordance what part of something speech it is. You can't even use the Strong's Concordance to find out anything about the structure of the word, what it is in the sentence. You can't use that in Strong's because... Strong's Concordance is only going to give you nominative case, masculine gender, singular. That's all Mr. Strong will give you. If you had a concordance that had every one of these words in it, where it was in the sentence, what part of speech it was, you'd have to have a trailer to carry your concordance. So Mr. Strong has made it this way. He'll give you in the... The word the is basically the same in all these places. It shows you where it is in the sentence, what gender it is, and if it's singular or plural. That's what it'll do. But there's still, it's, every one of these words is the. But it'll show you what it is. So the, all, would be one particular all. And the all would be what is the all? Well, let's look at John 3.16 and let's see that. Huh? We'll get back to Joel in a minute. I, I'm, sometimes I've just got so many things on my mind. John 3.16. That's the first thing on your paper. John 3.16. Here's John 3.16. That whosoever, it's not whosoever, it's Whosoever is not a Greek word. It's not even a good English word. I think you ought, they ought to outlaw whosoever. Take it out of the Bible everywhere they find it and throw it away. It's worthless. Whosoever is like saying, and everybody wants to put whosoever will. They think of that Baptist song, whosoever will may come. May, you know, there's no may come. May means Permission. Can means ability. Can you do this? Are you able? If you ask my high school, Miss, Miss Redding, my 12th grade English teacher, she said, can I go to the bathroom? She'd say, I don't know, can you? That means can you go right now, right here, right on the spot? May means permission. And Miss Redding would say, I don't know, can you? And you'd say, well, may I go? And she'd say, yes, you are able to go. Go ahead. Now, so whenever somebody puts may in there, it's wrong. God is not granting anyone that they may be saved. Anytime you find that, it's wrong. Like might. Even in Romans 8, 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might strike that out of your Bible. Might is not in the text. The only time might is used is when it means power. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. There's no might in that. Throw it away. What this is showing you is that our King James Bible has got a lot of error in it, in the words, particularly in the word whosoever. What it says in John 3.16 it says, 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, and whosoever is no such word as ho, pas ho, and the word believe is pistuon. It actually says that the ho, believing all, there's no condition to it. For God in this fashion loved the world that the believing all, the word is pas, shall have everlasting life. There's When you say that whosoever believeth in him, you're making it sound like it's conditional. It's not conditional. It says that the believing, that believing is a participle. You say, I don't know what a participle is. I'll tell you. It's the same thing. It's a verbal word. And in English, it's an ing word. That the believing all, it is a, an adjective. It's a verb acting as an adjective. Believe is a verb. We've said that a thousand times. It's an adjective. Being an adjective, adjectives tell how, excuse me, which, what kind of. Now, this is not something I learned recently. Something I learned about 1956 in the 11th, 10th, 11th grade. I don't remember which. Which, what kind of, or how many. The five birds flew over the barn. Five is an adjective. It just modifies nouns and pronouns. So it'll tell which noun, which table, or what bird, or what kind of person, how, or how many. That's what a adjective does. So this says the, a particular all, it's one, one, remember we looked at that, one, it's masculine gender, singular, and it's one particular all. It's a, de it's a definite pronoun. So, it's, it's the believing all shall have everlasting life. Believing, only the believing all will have everlasting life. Believing being adjective, it tells which all. The, it's a particular specific all. The all is the church. Everyone in the church that believes is the body. It's the flock. And each one of these is singular. It's the church, the body, the flock, the wife, the bride will have everlasting life. It's not whosoever will, if you, well, you know what? Whosoever will may come, but where are you going to get the will? Psalms 110.3, and I've got it on here. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Thy is a pronoun. Thy is a possessive pronoun. When the Bible says, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, his instead of he, he is a pronoun. His means it's a form of he, but it means it's possessive. It means Jesus possesses something. He possesses something. He shall save his. There in Matthew, the first chapter. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. And gosh, notice something else there. His name wasn't Jesus. What do you mean? Thou you call his name Jesus. Name is the word onoma. Onoma means that's his authority. You will call God's authority upon the earth Jesus. That was his title. 
Jim is not my name. My name actually on my birth certificate is Jimmy. It's not James. But that's not my name. My name is Brown. And I was a brown when the, the sperm of my father penetrated the egg of my mother, and I became brown then. They didn't name me until I was born. They didn't give me my title. Brown is my name. That's my authority. I got my father's look. I got my father's big, loud voice. And you can tell that I come from him when you see a picture of me, picture of him. That's our name is the authority. And I got his characteristics. I got a lot of his ways. God deliver me from some of them. <laughs> but his is a form of heat. When the Bible says in Luke 19 and 10, the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Was is a past tense being verb. You were lost, but when he's come into the world, none of the flock is lost. We're all found when he's here. So that's the flock. The flock is all, it's one flock, it's one wife, one bride, and that is the all. That's the, it's a specific, particular all. That's why the Bible does not say, whosoever believes in him, it says that the, the believing all shall have everlasting life. That's what it says. It doesn't say whosoever. I hate the word whosoever. And Adrian Rogers, he hated predestination. Adrian Rogers was the, one of the biggest preachers in the Southern Baptist Convention. He was president of the Southern Baptist Convention twice. No other man had been to that position. Second largest church over there in, in Memphis, second largest church in the Southern Baptist Convention. You can go online, look up Adrian Rogers, uh, predestination, and he says, is God predestined men to heaven and hell? And he said, absolutely not. And he read, Jacob, have I loved Esau, have I hated? And then he said, it doesn't mean that. It's just, he just called God a liar. I don't like Adrian Rogers, I never have. He, he said, these words are not true. Now, declension is going down the line in a, the reason we're preaching on this is because we came to it when we're teaching through Peter's life there in Acts, the second chapter. Let's go to back to Acts, the second chapter. Now, there's several verses that say whosoever, and people want to put will in there. You can't, when you see the word whosoever, whosoever will. That's not in the Bible. It's one time in the Bible. And it's on the back page of your it's no it's on this this front page, turn it over, turn it over, and down at the bottom, Revelation twenty two seventeen is in this square right here. Let's go over to, before I get back to these other verses, let's go to Revelation. And this has been one of the it's falsely translated. Remember, half of the translators of the King James Bible were Roman Catholic. They put their two cents in. They had a knockdown, drag out fight in the translating committee. And I've got a book here, somewhere up here. It's called uh, God's Secretaries. I got it up here. Oh, here it is. I showed it to you the other day. And this is talking about the translating room of the translations of the King James Bible. They had 53 translators, and I believe it's six of them quit. They ended up with half of them being Calvinist and half of them being Roman Catholic. And boy, they fought tooth and nail. And there was a lot of compromise, and some of these the and all are part of the compromise. And it had to be Roman Catholic putting their two cents in. We've got the original text in the interlinear Bible. What Mr. Strong will give you is nominative case and he'll give you singular and he'll give you singular nominative masculine gender that's all he'll give you when you're looking at something in a strong concordance you got you got singular plural 
masculine and feminine, neuter in the singular, masculine and feminine, neuter in the gender, uh, in the plural, and then you got nominative, genitive, dative, and accusative case. Once in a while you have a vocative case. That's a direct address. That's only in the singular. If it has a V at the bottom, it'll have, that's vocative. That's a direct address like, you stop that. Well, most of them, here's what you've got. This is what you got. And all Mr. Strong will give you is this right here. Singular, masculine, nominative case. That's all he'll give you. The nominative case is either the subject or the predicate nominative. Genitive case is shown possession. When John came preaching the baptism of repentance, the fact that it's genitive makes all the difference in the world. John came preaching in Luke 3 and 3. John came preaching the baptism of repentance. When you look up of repentance, it will tell you its genitive case. That means, y'all have heard me say this, but I don't think anybody, man ought to register on you. The fact that you show what part of speech repentance is in that verse, that means baptism is owned by repentance. So baptism has to do with repenting. That can't be watered just by the part of speech that repentance is. It is genitive case. That means true baptism is of repentance. Let me explain that. Jim Brown of Hendersonville. What does that mean? Well, it means that Hendersonville possesses me in some way. If you would call Hendersonville repentance and Jim Brown is possessed by Hendersonville. So Jim Brown would be like baptism. Baptism possessed by Hendersonville in what way? Well, I preach here, I live here, and it possesses me in that way. Baptism, true baptism, cannot possibly, by showing the part of speech, and you use that with a parsing guide. What you have to do is look up exactly how, let me show you what I'm talking about. I'll use this this here, but I'll put it on the board. When you look up in John 3.16, you look up world. World is the word cosmos. That's the way Mr. Strong will put it. Cosmos, or K-O-S-M-O-S. -O you see me put two S's in there? This is an S in the middle of a word. This is an S on the end of a word. It's, it's like our S, but it's got a smaller curve on the bottom. It's like that. Like our S, curve is smaller on the bottom. That's the S on the end of a word. Well, that's the way that Mr. Strong will put it, but that's not the word. You have to look in your interlinear Bible, and when you look in it, this is the way it'll have it. It'll have nominative, genitive, dative, and accusative case. Remember I said, I said that accusative is the direct object. Let me put it like this. Accusative is the direct object. Remember what the direct object was? Huh? What I said was? It's, it's what? It's the ball. That's right. Jim threw the ball. It receives the action of the verb. It says, doesn't say God so loved. It's so far God loved uh, world. And it'll give you the word world 
it'll say cos mon. But straw, and it'll, if we spell that in English, cosmon. Cosmon. If you look at this, it'll say cosmos, or cosmos, however you want to pronounce it. It'll say cosmos. Well, the reason it's cosmon is because it receives the action of loved. Loved is a verb, and it'll say God. We're not going to get into soul right now. God loved Cosmon in the interlinear Bible. It's where it's spelt. K. Well, let me put it over here. K O S M O N. Oh, excuse me. Cosmos. It's what Mr. Strong would say is Cosmos. And what the interlinear Bible says is Cosmon. And the way you spell it, you look at K O S P R S S K O S M O O N. You got to realize an N looks like a V, an H looks like an upside down, uh, M looks like an upside down H with a little hook on it. You have to learn your alphabet. What you learn, just learn the small letters. Don't worry about the large letters because you very seldom ever use the large le letters. Worry about these. Use the small letters. So KOS, so what it says, God so loved, and it says in the interlinear Bible, cosmon, it doesn't say cosmos like the Greek concordance says. That's because world receives the action of loved loved is the verb so god loved cosmos or cosmon actually loved world so that's accusative case cosmos is accusative case it, it's actually cosmon you understand it's not cosmos it's cosmon you understand that or do i need to, do I need to say that again God loved, wherever it is in the sentence, the spelling is changed, word English is changed, K-O-S-M, K-O-S-M is the stem of the word. Only the word endings are changed depending on the character of the word. It's O-N in the accusative voice, it's O-S in the nominative case. You understand that? Is that hard to understand? I'm just trying to help you to understand these guys, the translators were intelligent. Lots of compromise due to the Roman Catholics there and due to probably a whole bunch of different, half of 40, about 47 translators were in the translating room. Half of them were Roman Catholics, half of them were Calvinists. And you had a lot of the Calvinists that had different opinions about what the words meant. People say, do we have to do that? You don't have to do it. I'm trying to teach you how to look at individual things. Now, let me go back over here and look at the two. There are three verses that are really people struggle with. Back over here in Acts 2. Is that the Revelation? Now, i got to get back. Let me go back to Revelation. Thank you, Mary. Okay. You've got this on there, on the front page. On the front page, on the back side of the front page, look down at the bottom, Revelation twenty-two seventeen. And here's what they did to translate it. It's just not right. All right. Now, I hope you guys are paying attention back there. This might teach you you need to learn your English. Okay, Christopher and Jonathan? You need to learn your English. I want you to learn. It's important. You might be preaching one day. You might be painting one day. You might be doing something where you need to be able to measure something and know what it is and be able to express it in English. Now look in Revelation 22. I'm going slow. Am I going slow enough? Are you missing some of it? I hope you're getting some of it. 
Now, this is the only place you're going to find it looks like whosoever will. Look at verse 17. The spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him heareth say, Come. Now, let's stop there for a minute. Heareth is the word akuo. Okay, well, you are. Akuo means to understand. But since none understandeth, now let me erase that. Since there's none that understandeth and none seeks after God, you're going to have to get understanding from somewhere. It has to come from God. Okay, akuo is the Greek word here, which means to understand. And then you have the word hoop, A-K-O-U-O, means to obey. But you've got to look at some other verses where the Romans 3.10 says there's none that understandeth. Well, if you're understanding, then you're hearing. How are you able to hear? Proverbs 20 and 12, the hearing ear, You can't talk about hearing without talking about the Old Testament, Shema, the hearing ear, and the seeing eye. Seeing eye. The Lord hath made even both of them. So the hearing ear, if you can hear, you've got to, you've got to even apply that to the New Testament, and the seeing eye, the word here is the word shama, and the word obey is the word shama. In the Hebrew, obey and hear are the same exact word, shama. They're both shama. So when you move back over here to Revelation, let him that heareth say, come. You can't hear without obedience. And let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will. Not in the text. Absolutely not there. The word it actually says, the, ho, it actually says, ho, you got it on your paper there. The word is thalon. But Thalon is a form of Thalema, T-H-E-L-E-M-A. It's a form of Thalema. Thalema is that word over in John 1.13. That we're born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of the of man but of God it's of God's will that we're born we're born not of blood nor the will of flesh nor the will of man but of God and that word thalame means purpose excuse me means determination or determined if we're born we're born determined by God and this word thalon is willing it doesn't say whosoever will. It says the willing. And it says let him take. Let him. Him. Take. Let him is third person singular. If I say I. That's first person. I is first person. First person. First person. You is second person. They is talking about a third party that's out of contact between you and me. He, they, them. So it's third, it's first person, it's third person singular. 
and it's not a choice. Take is the word thalema. Let him take. He says, the willing, take. And it's imperative command. Whoever has the will has to get the will by God because there's none that seeketh after God. If you have a will to come to Christ, if you have a will to desire and a will to learn, you're already a believer and you got that from God. So it says, the willing, let him take. Take. I've got that here. And it take is an imperative command. It says, the willing, take this. That's not a choice. So whosoever will is not in this text. Can you see that? In fact, it says, Ho Thelon. We got Ho Thelon in Greek. Ho. You got it in, in Greek first. Ho. Huh? Okay. I'll flip to it. Sometimes it's hard to keep myself organized with its many things to say. Hothelon. There it is, right here. Ho, and that's a TH. See this here? TH. It doesn't look like it, but it is. T-H-E, T-H, see that's one letter in the Greek alphabet. T-H, it's a theta. It's one letter in the Greek, but it's two letters in our English. T-H-E-L-O-N. That's actually what it says. That's where you translate it over. So it says, ho, the, thelon, the, willing, take. It says, the, willing, take. Take this water. It's my water of life eternally, and you're required to take it. Now, let's go back over here. Another verse that when the Bible says, whosoever will, or whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, it doesn't say that in the Greek text. Let's look over here in Acts, the second chapter. This is how off base. See, people are going to say, well, the King James Bible is good enough for me. Well, it's not good enough for me. I use the King James Bible because it comes from the correct, what I believe is the correct text, the Texas Receptus. Anytime you see TR, it means Texas Receptus. If you see WH, it means Westcott and Hort text, and out of that, they come up in 1881 with the Westcott and Hort text. That seems to be too late to me to come up with a text. And they're saying from the first part of the 4th century, somewhere around 325 to 1881, we did not have the true Bible because they had to come up, Westcott and Hort had to come up with their text where they get the NIV, the RSV, the Revised Standard Version. They get the New England Bible. They get the American Standard. And all of that comes out of the Westcott and Hort text. And I don't believe in that. Now, you can believe in it if you want to, but I don't believe in it. Now, now where was I? Let's go, back to, let's go back to Acts, the second chapter. The whole reason for me teaching on this is to help you see what they've, when they've written whosoever, it's just not there. It's never in the text. It'll have who once in a while under another word but not whosoever. And most people want to, when they see whosoever, will, they want to naturally put will on the back end of it. Nobody's willing. Let me show you. For I'll, I'll open it up and hold my place so I don't get off of it. Acts 2, but let's look at Psalms 110.3. And then we'll come back to this. Psalms 110. Psalms and you're going to have preachers try to talk you out and say, whosoever is good enough for me. It's not good enough for me. Psalms 110.3. And I love this verse because it says something 
more than just thy people shall be willing. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. When the morning starts to birth and the sun is just coming up, that's what it's saying. You're going to be willing to serve God when the sun's coming up. Do you know I can really identify with this verse? I used to be in real estate, and I this was before cell phones in the early 80s. And I'd wake up in the morning and I'd have a stack of contacts by the bed. And I'd wake up and reach over for contact, didn't care who it was. I'd grab the phone and start dialing at 7 o'clock. And when God got through dealing with me, I don't reach for contacts no more. I immediately start thinking about the Lord when I wake up at the womb of the morning. I know what that's about now. I know what this verse is about. The first thing I think of when I wake up, who can I talk to? I talk to this guy. I go back by and talk to him. In the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. So this is about thinking about God early in the day. And then let's go back over here. So we're only willing in the day when God deals with us and brings his power upon our life and we start thinking about truth. Go back over here to Acts 2. The reason I'm trying to show you this is because it has to do with what we've been talking about, what we've been talking about, about the Gentiles coming to the light. It's the Gentiles are the all. The all is where we say whosoever will. I think I know why they put whosoever will or whosoever shall call. We're in this second chapter of Acts, and I don't want to go through the whole story because if I do, it'll take me half a day to do this, and I won't be able to finish up. I'm not even going to be able to finish. I'm going to come back and say some of these same things next week. Maybe I can help you see. I hope you can see some of why whosoever is one of the errors, one of the great errors of the Bible, whosoever makes it look like anybody that can conjure up the will in themselves can come. No, if you have the will, God has to put the will in your heart because you don't seek after God. That's not your nature. Your nature is to seek self. That's what the Bible says, isn't it? So, Look here in Acts 2. Acts 2, and you look down here in verse 21. Now, what's going on here at Pentecost? Peter's preaching in Glossa and Dialectos. Those are the two words for tongue. And the whole purpose of the tongues, the whole purpose was if the gospel to all men, and this takes us to all men, which we're going to have to do another paper on. Usually all men is pos and throw pos. Anthropos, when a man studies anthropology he studies in biology about man it's the word man pos is all all when the bible says in first timothy the second chapter it says god would have all men be saved and that's uh, that's something that most of the calvinists don't know how to answer God will have all men be saved and all men will be saved, but not every individual. Because the Jews had a word, synecdoche. Synecdoche meant a part of something. And if you miss this, you're going to miss a whole lot of things in the Bible. Part of something is the whole of something. If I said I spent the day with Ben, it don't mean I spent 24 hours with him, does it? Don't mean 
I spent the day, 24 hours. No. That's a part being the whole. We even use that. They said if one black man, one red man, one yellow man, one white man, and one brown man was saved, they would say all men were saved. This is the all. all of How many people are in the world that came out of eight men or eight people? They're all in the world come out of Noah, his three sons and their wives. That's all men. That's the same way. And why would God say this to Timothy? Because in the Old Testament, from Adam until Jesus, the only people that had the truth was the bloodline of Adam through Seth, through Enosh, through Canaan, through Mahalalel, Mahalalel on down to uh, Jared, and then Enoch, and then Methuselah, Lamech, Noah. These are all fathers and sons. That's in Genesis, the fifth chapter. And then from Noah to Shem, and then from Shem to Arphaxed, Arphaxed to Salah, from Salah to Peleg, and Reu, and Serug, to Hamor, to Terah, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. That's one man. As opposed to one flesh, now all men, pos, anthropos. That's why whosoever says pos, ho, the all. The all of God's men and God's family that he chose from the foundation of the world. But if you believe in free will, you can't even afford to translate these words. God is going to tell you it's one particular all. Not whosoever. I hate that word. But how are you going to teach that on radio to all these people and get them to understand that if they don't believe in predestination? It's like pulling teeth without Novocaine or without some deadening. Boy, it's like... <laughs> and I'm out here talking to people every day about this. I don't try to do this on the street with them. They ain't ever going to understand that. But tell them whosoever is not in the Bible. And it's not... And we didn't put all the whosoever words down, but it's not there. When the Bible speaks of the spirits in prison, spirits in prison there in, in 1 Peter 2 and 18, the spirits, or 3 and 18, excuse me, spirits in prison, prison fulake, fulake means the division of day and night, or light, and dark. All these verses tie together. The spirits in prison ties with pos ho. Pos ho. The all. Or the pistuon believing all. It's not whosoever. Do with it what you want. I, I am, this thing of whosoever bothered me for years. Anytime you're talking to a Calvinist, or a, uh, or a, anybody who calls himself a reformer and they teach predestination, ask them about all men. God would have all men to be saved. They can't even answer that. I hope some of you are watching. I'm going to give you the answer which you're supposed to say to them. They'll say, we believe in predestination, believe in Romans 8, 29, and we believe in the elect of God, but we don't know what to do with the all men. All men will be saved but not every individual. You'll have somebody out of every nation, tongue, and tribe. That's what the Bible means in the seventh chapter of Revelation. Every nation, tongue, and tribe. That's the all men. That's the spirits in prison because the Gentiles from Adam, notice how all this ties together. From Adam to Jesus, all the Gentiles, which were not of this one flesh here, 
This is one flesh. This you'll find in Genesis 5 and Genesis 11. That's the lineage of God from Adam to Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. That's all this one flesh, one flesh. And because they became involved in Baal and Grove and all of this sun and tree worship that Constantine brought in the church in 325 A.D. and named it Christ's Mass, God scatters Israel all over the earth and says, Now I'm going to call my people by another name there in Isaiah 65. I'm going to call my people by Gentile elect church. Church. Body. Body. Wife. Bride. Flock. Wife. Bride. Flock. And Paul will tell each one of these churches, he will tell Ephesus, you were darkness, you were in prison, but now you light in the Lord, walk as children of light. Gosh, light is predestination, isn't it? Predestinate is the word pro, horizo. Horizo, it's got a dear critical mark, it's an H sound. Horizo is our word horizon. So whom God foreknew, he's predestined beforehand. Pro is our word pre. Determined us for the horizon or the light. And I like to put the horizon on the board. Horizon is the division of day and night or light and darkness. That's the same word as prison. That's what a horizon is. And you can see the horizon from the light, but you can't see it from the dark. So God has predetermined us for the light or for the truth. And that's predestination. And the all men is bringing in the elect predestinated family out of darkness and bringing them to the light. That's the all. It's, the, it's all the flock, all the bride, all the wife. And he knew us before the foundation of the world and he died for us before the foundation of the world. And that's the all men. In order for God to have all men to be saved, he's got to have people out of every nation, tongue, and tribe, doesn't he? He's got to have red men, black men, white men, yellow men, and women too. I'm sorry, I left y'all out. And women. Because woman is woe man. Woman is man too. Woe man. So, now, the reason I'm bringing this out is because we were talking about Peter's life and how he stood at Pentecost. Gosh, the whole picture, it's one big, huge picture, isn't it? Remember, Israel kept going after Baal and the grove and Shemosh and Molech and all of these sun and tree goddesses. God says, I'm going to blind your eyes. I'm going to pour out of my spirit on all flesh. All flesh or all men, or pos, anthropos, all men, pos, anthropos, or pos, ho, the all of mankind. It's not as hard as it looks. And remember, because Israel kept going after these sun and tree goddesses, which was brought into the church by Constantine and renamed the Christ Mass in 325 A.D., God says, this is my method of pouring out my spirit, and it's not a jumping up and down spirit on the stage. Woo, I praise God, I got the Holy Ghost. That's not it. You define spirit. What is the spirit? Somebody tell me. Truth. It's truth. The Gentiles were forbidden from having the truth in the Old Testament. God would make an exception once in a while, like Ruth the Moabite. He'd saved her, and she's in the lineage of Christ. There in Matthew, the first chapter. Like Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar said, All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He doeth according to his will in the armies of heaven among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay God's hand or say to him, What do are you, what are you doing? Daniel 4.35 
So once in a while he would save a Gentile, but not on the whole. He would tell all these leaders over here, kill the Gentiles, kill. We're not going to open up to all men or pos ho or pos anthropos until Acts 2. And Peter's preaching at Pentecost to Jews from every nation under heaven. What are they doing from every nation? Exodus 23. See, pos ho, the all, is talking about all flesh. It's talking about the spirits in prison. It's talking about, look here what God has done. This is astounding what he does. Remember the word forgiveness? Ephesus. Without understanding these Greek words, I don't know how you could even say this. Forgiveness means to pardon. It does not mean to parole. You know what a pardon is, don't you? When the government says, I'm pardoning this man, I'm wiping all of his fences clean. They're not there anymore. Strike him out of all the records at the prison and out of the government. He's free. That's what a pardon is. Ephesus means to pardon and release from prison. Remember, prison, philake, is the division of day and night or light and darkness. Light and dark. There's a verse over there in Isaiah. So forgiveness means to pardon and release from prison. The Gentiles were in darkness. And Paul tells them, now you're light in the Lord, walk as children of light. That's what prison is. And that's why the all of mankind is going to be saved. Men out of, you can read it out of Revelation 7 where the Bible says, around the throne of God will be people from every nation, tongue, and tribe. Every glossa. Everybody. When the Bible says every tongue shall confess, it does not mean every one of these appendages will confess. I don't mean that. It means every foreign language will confess that Jesus is Christ to the Lord of glory, to the glory of God the Father. Every gloss, they'll have somebody in every tribe in the world that will be part of God's elect or part of God's pos ho, the all. I hope you can get a hold of it. How much time do I have, Mike? All right. Maybe I can get to these other verses. All right. Let's go back over here. Now, what Peter's doing. Well, I've got to finish telling you this. During the Old Testament, the Gentiles were blinded. And they were in the dark. I love to read this verse over in Isaiah. Let me read this. Isaiah. If you would define words, you can find out what these things mean. Isaiah. 46, I believe it is, or 42. Sometimes I get both of them mixed up. All right. Isaiah 42, excuse me. 42. Isaiah, through this entire book, is talking about darkness and light and the Gentiles coming to the light. The Gentiles coming to the light is the prisoners of the Old Testament locked in prison, locked in darkness, and coming out because Israel went after all this bell in the grove and all this stuff that was come that brought out by Constantine and and called Roman Catholicism. Called Christmas, Christ Mass. It's you can't separate Christmas from the all men. You, can you see how all these things just fall into a slot in this whole picture. And of course, he says here in in 42nd chapter of Isaiah, verse 6, And I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand, will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people and for a light of the Gentiles. So, And all through here, you take your concordance, look up Gentiles, 
and take every time it's mentioned in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is talking about the Gentiles coming to the light all through the book, coming out of prison. And they're in prison back then. And he says, to open the blind eyes of the Gentiles, to bring the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. And Paul was a missionary to the Gentiles. Peter was a missionary to the Jews. And Paul says to a Gentile, he says in Acts, my favorite verse to tie this to is in Acts the 26th chapter, and Paul says it. So the all men are the all, whosoever, it's not whosoever, it's the all of God's family, his people, his elect, his body, his church, his wife, his flock. It's one flock, it's singular. They is singular, pas, or ho, singular. Is it? You got it in front of you there. Pas, all, ho, thee. That's what the whosoever is. It's the all. The all of mankind is someone out of every nation, tongue, and tribe. And Paul says over here in Acts, the 26th chapter, Y'all know how many things are going through my head and I can't even get them all out of my mouth. I'll leave a verse and Mary will say, go, what about so-and-so? One of y'all will say, what about the other verse he's going to read? I don't even know how to get it all out of my mouth. So if you'll excuse me when I say this, I'll come back to it. And he says here in the 26th chapter when he's standing in front of Agrippa, this Herod, Herod Agrippa, he says... He says, Who art thou, Lord? And he says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? In verse 14, it's red, red letters. That's Jesus talking to Saul on the road to Damascus. And Paul is reading this. He, well, did I say Saul? I meant Paul. Paul, uh, and Jesus says, why, It's hard for you to kick against the pricks. The pricks were the ox goads. He said, all you're doing is injuring yourself. You're kicking against what I'm... Notice, he didn't ask Paul, would you like to accept me as your personal Savior? He put belief in Paul's heart. He said, hey, I'm calling you. You follow me. And Paul says, yes, sir. He didn't have a... The only conversion he experienced was God striking him down and saying, you belong to me. Do my work. And he had been killing Christians the day before. He's on his way up there to Damascus to drag some Christians back so they could be slaughtered in Jerusalem by the Pharisees. Have you ever noticed he didn't have a conversion experience other than be struck down by God and say, why are you trying to fight me? You're not going to go get away with fighting me. And then he says, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest, but rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee, for this purpose, here's your purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people, from the Gentiles, on whom to now I send you to the Gentiles, the people, the spirits in prison, those are in darkness. And he says that in the next verse, to open their eyes. Same thing he said over there in Isaiah 42. To open their eyes to turn them from darkness to light. That's forgiveness, isn't it? Then he says forgiveness. And from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins. Forgiveness is the word of Ephesus, to pardon them and release the Gentiles from prison, from prison, from darkness. You see that? And inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith, hagiadzo, set apart by faith that is in me. Now, go back to Acts 2. So all the, Gentile, all the Jews are coming from all over the world because in Exodus, the 23rd chapter, the Jews have to come from all over the world to these three festivals, Passover, Pentecost, and the Feast of Ingathering, which is the same thing as the Feast of Huts, Huts and Tabernacles. All are the same festival, just different names. And the first feast is Passover and Nisan. 
which is March, April, March, April, and the last is in the, that's in the first month of the ecclesiastical year. The last month of the ecclesiastical year will be over here in Tishri. That's September, October. That's the end of the, that's the end of the festival. At the harvest is there. The beginning of the growth is over here, and they start harvesting in Nisan. So through their entire seven-month period, they start harvesting until the festival's over, till the last festival, and they gather in all the sheep and separate the sheep from the goats, and they separate from wheat from the tares, and that's a picture of us at the end of time. Now, where was I? Got my mind on so many things. So they have to come back to these festivals, back to Pentecost, but they have sinned so much when Jesus comes in Jerusalem, he stops still, looks out over Jerusalem and says to Jerusalem, If thou hadst known even thou in this thy day the things that belong to thy peace, now you're blind. That's four days before he comes in to be crucified as a Passover lamb. So he blinds the eyes of the Jews in Luke 19, four days before the Passover, before he's crucified as the Passover lamb, four days, the Passover lamb had to be examined for four days to make sure he had no fault, no blemishes in him. When Pilate said, I find no fault in him, while he was saying that, the priests over at the tabernacle were examining 300, 400,000 lambs and one, one lamb could feed 17 to 18 people at the Passover. There could have been, the compendium says, as many as 12 million Jews at that Passover. So these were Jews from every nation under heaven. How's God going to pour out of his spirit on all flesh or the all of mankind, Paso? All of those Jews are going to go back home these were devout men, Jews from every nation. Have you noticed how this whosoever ties right in with what we've been teaching? Jim, if all those Jews came back with that video, then he blinded their eyes? Not, well, he was blinding the eyes of Jews as far as seeing him and knowing him. Yeah. Only 3,000, only 3,000 of those 12 million Jews or so were believers. That's not a very good percentage. 3,000 were saved there at Pentecost, or at, at Pentecost. There were thousands of them. And there were millions there. The P compendium said there were, could have been as many as 12 million, but only 3,000 were believers. Well, that's that's why a, they killed them then. Huh? That's why they killed them. Yeah, they didn't believe. The thing is, the 3,000 Jews believed, but the 12 million didn't. Mm -hmm. That's why you go to the third chapter, and Peter... And John healed this man that's lame from birth. And they said, don't you preach in this name anymore. They still hate Jesus. You get in that third chapter. They, it's, it's 50 days after the Passover where he was killed. And they still hate him with a passion. Why did they even come to the festival? These were devout Jews that believed in Jehovah God, but not Jesus. They can believe in Jehovah, but Jesus said, no man comes to the Father but by me. It was their custom. They believed in it. They were devout. Remember, the word devout means they believed in the Jewish laws, but they didn't believe in Jesus. Well, that's exactly true. So they're coming back from all over the world, and how they're, what they're going to do, every one of these devout, the, the ones that are devout, they said, how here we were in our own dialect when we were born. Well, here's the whole point of it all. This is, a, this is a map showing all of them coming back, devout Jews from every nation. Those arrows are all pointing towards Jerusalem from everywhere in the world. And they're coming from all over the world. They're hearing in their own dialect where they were born. And when they get here, they're going to go home after these festivals. And this is how God's going to pour out of His Spirit on all flesh. Every one of those believing 3,000 is going to go back to his homeland and preach what he heard Peter preach in his dialect when he was born. You understand what I'm saying? They're going to preach the message that they said, how here we were man in our own dialect. 
that the word tongue is either gloss of foreign language or dialectos. And they had a different dialect. They had a different dialect in every city state. So when these people, these 3,000 Jews that are going to be among the 11 or 12 million, they're going to hear Peter preach in their own dialect. They had a dialect in Corinth of the Greek street language. These dialects would differ as much as Spanish and Italian in our day and time. They're going to hear in their dialect in Carthage, and every one of them are going to go out, go back home. What they heard Peter preached in Acts 2, they're going to go back to the Gentiles and to all the world and preach the gospel to these Gentiles. That's how, the, that's how God's going to pour out of His Spirit on all flesh, the spirits in prison, the posho, not whosoever. And if you've got whosoever in there, you've got the wrong word. It's not there. You preachers, I'm looking at the camera. But if you find out it's posso and it's the all, it's one specific particular all. The fact that it's ho means it's one particular. If you had a or an all, you can't have a or an. There's no indefinite articles. And it specifically states anytime you find the in any of its forms, any of its forms, it means one particular specific. specific. I'll get right in a minute. Pacific. It's one specific all. You get that? Do y'all see how this goes along with everything? I've got it in my hand looking for it. I'm going looking for something. It's one specific. No, that's the pronoun. The. This is one nominative case, masculine and singular. This is one feminine, singular. This is one neuter, one table. He, he picked up the table. Picked up would be the verb. Table would have to be neuter gender. It had to be this word right there. To, the. And if you were in genitive, Jim Brown of Hendersonville. Hendersonville would be neuter gender, be genitive case, so it has to be to, till you. you understand? Once you start understanding, what there's not much to English. It's very basic. If you're going to understand a subject and a predicate and the verbs, either being verb or a uh, action verb, you, they call them transitive and intransitive. Intransitive means a being verb. It means there's no movement to it. Transitive means transient, moving. What's a transient? Somebody that moves from corner to corner down here. We say he's a transient and he needs to go, to the, go down to the mission. That's a transient. That's a moving verb. So when you see a moving verb or an action verb, there has to be a recipient of the verb. Throw, through, run. Any action verb's got to have something that receives the action from the subject. It's not as hard as it looks. All the English I teach you is what I learned in 1953, 54, and 55, and 56 in high school and junior high. I'm not teaching you college English. It's real simple stuff. And if you can realize that, It'll help you to know what a nominative case is. That's the subject or the predicate nominative. Genitive case shows possession. Dative case is the indirect object. Jim threw the ball to John. John is the indirect object. The direct object is the accusative case, ball. Unless you got balls, unless you got through the apples like my cousins did at me one time on my grandfather's farm. They were had a basket of apples and it's throwing them at me. They threw the apples... Nominative case, threw them at Jim, ta, through the apples, or through the apples at the Jim. <laughs> it's not as hard as you may think. Everybody knows 
Doesn't most everybody know a nominative case is subject to a direct object? Doesn't most everybody know genitive case of Jim Brown, of Hendersonville? Baptism of repentance. Then most of you know a dative case, indirect object. Huh? Yeah. Or accusative case, Jim threw the ball. Accusative case receives the action of the action verb. Now. It's hard to believe that only 3,000 people believed. Huh? Only 3,000 believed out of millions. That's a very small amount. Let's just say 3,000 over what they estimate, 12 million. One, three, four, one four thousandth. One four thousandth. Now, guys, did y'all pay attention to that? I'm talking about them boys on the back. <laughs> yeah. So there were only one four thousandth of people believed. Divide four thousand to one, and it's zero, zero, zero something. That ain't very many people, is it? One out of every 4,000 people at Pentecost believed. Huh? Probably ain't much better today. If I could find one, I have talked to 1,000 people in this town. I mean, I'm talking to 1,000 people every week. We're on TV every night at 8.30 for an hour and a half. We're on two times on Wednesday night, tonight, and two times on Sunday night. And I know there has to be a thousand. There has to be people watching. I'm saying the most outrageous things that any preacher in the country is saying. Christmas is pagan. Easter is pagan. God doesn't love everybody. Baptism is not water. It's blood. And when you say that to people, they think, you're nuts. Everybody else in town has got a baptistry in their church. Why don't you have one? Because baptized means to cover with a stain or die. Yeah, it, don't it don't matter what it means. They don't care what it means. They don't even care. They don't even care what whosoever means, do they? Now, do I have any time, Mike? Eleven. Peter is here saying exactly what the scripture says. He says here in verse twenty-one, "It shall come to pass." that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's look at that on the board. It's not whosoever. It never has been whosoever. All right. Acts 2, 21. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You got it on your paper. Pos, all, the who. Hosts. You got that also on your paper. It's all who call. Not whosoever, it's all the who's that call. It's a singular who. Because, i got to say this. Every time you have an adjective in the Greek, it has to carry the same gender, the all. It says the believing all. That's why the is singular, Believing is singular. It has the, when you have modifying words, to modify means to alter. To alter. When it says, for whosoever believes in him, it doesn't say that. It says that, the, believing, all. All is the pronoun that the and believing modify or alter. Anytime you have you have adjectives modifying a word in the Greek. They have to carry the same gender and the same number. The is singular. All is singular. Believing is singular. All is singular. There's one all. It always has to be that way. So therefore, when you're reading this, whosoever shall call 
Well, this is also quoted in Romans 10, 13. Let's look over there. It's saying that the all. It says, who all calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But look here the way it puts it over here in Romans 10. This is, every, this is people's excuse. They say, see, all you have to do is pray and ask God into your heart. But you can't. You know what? None seeks after God unless God puts the belief in your heart. And how shall they call on him in whom they've not believed? Look at Romans 10, 13. That's the next page. Huh? Next page. Next page, okay. Romans 10, 13. Thank you. I'm glad I got a helper down here. Okay. Romans 10, 13. It says in your English Bible, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But it says, The who... This is singular, so the who has to be singular. When you're going to modify a word, the word you're modifying also has to carry the same number, singular or plural. So who has to be singular. I should have mentioned that on Acts 2.21. Who has to be singular. The singular who. It's one who. Well, we don't talk like that. Well, I know they were here 2,000 years before you were. And they get to say it the way they want to say it. It says, the who, that call. And who is the one who? Because the next verse says, how shall they, who is they? They is a pronoun referring back to the who's. They. They. It's a pronoun. How shall they call on him? Any of these who that call on him, how shall they call on him and whom they've not believed? I keep saying belief is the method of salvation, not a sinner's prayer. This is not a sinner's prayer in verse 13. Verse 14 says you can't call on a God you don't believe in. Doesn't it? How shall they call on him and whom they not believe? Where are you going to get belief? You have to have faith put in your heart. Remember, faith is the noun. Faith. In the Greek, you have a noun and you have a verb form of it. A noun and the verb. Believe is the verb form of it. So believe is not something you assent to. It's something you do. You have to, in order to believe something, you don't add 2 plus 2 and get 22. You're going to lose if you do that. You get four every time. You have to learn to believe. What people believe is what they do, not what they say. An old song off the Lawrence Welk Show. It's what you do, not what you say, that's going to matter on Judgment Day. Practice, practice what you preach. I didn't know how true that was when I was young, listening to the Lawrence Welk Show. It's what you do, not what you say, that's going to count on Judgment Day. It's what you do. If you, if you believe something, you'll do it. You can't believe God. Say, I believe God. Let's go have a drink. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Dave was going, living in Dallas. It was the funniest thing. He lived in Dallas and had these Church of Christ. He wandered across the street from where he lived to the Church of Christ. And said, you've got to be baptized. <laughs> so Dave's, Dave's just a worldly guy. Uh, Heavy metal DJ at that time. So he, <laughs> Dave, it's funny. He said, they, well, if I need to be baptized to be saved, they said, you do. So they, here it is in the middle of the night. I don't know what time. It was late, wasn't it? About 9 o'clock. About 9 o'clock. <laughs> so they got somebody up there to baptize him in water. And he said, what do we do now? And he said, well, let's go have a beer. <laughs> 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 and I started laughing the first time he said that. And I laugh every time he says it. Because he was innocent, said, "Well, don't you drink beer after you do something this great?" Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny, Dave. That's hilarious. Am I out of time? Three minutes. Well, he says, "Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved." It says, 
pas, singular, being the and being an adjective, it has to modify a host. And you got a host that's a pronoun. And it's got to have the same number as pas. It's singular. It's the who. The who. That call upon the name of the Lord. But you can't call. The blind man said in John 9, 31, when he was accused, when Jesus, the Pharisees came to and accused him, uh, accused Jesus of being a, a liar, a sinner. And the blind man said, We know that God heareth not sinners. If any man be a worshiper of God, verse 31, John 9, 31, If any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. God only hears those that are worshiping him and doing his will. You cannot pray to God until after you are born. You can't say, Mama, hold my hand until after you're born. Can you? Mama, give me something to eat. Well, you're not born yet. Well, as soon as I get born, would you give me something to eat? It's ridiculous, isn't it? You can't accept Christ. You will accept Christ after you're born. You will say, okay, Mommy, I'll do what you say. But you cannot take hold of God before you're born. You can't even cry unto God before you're born. That's the miracle of the new birth. That's something he does. He picks out a person and says, you're mine. And I'm going to manipulate your life to go down this road, turn on your radio and hear this preacher preach. He's going to read out of the Bible. And I'm going to cut into your heart with that and make you alive. And people who have heard about accept Christ all their life, they hear some guy on the radio and say, I do believe that. And my wife's been trying to get me to believe. And they'll turn around and say, Honey, I need to go to the church and get baptized because I just found out I believe. No, you don't. You need to go, don't go anywhere and accept anything. You will accept God's words after you're born. But you won't accept them. You won't pray a sinner's prayer before you're born, will you? First of all, you don't believe in him. You're not seeking him. That's the miracle of the new birth. Who, no one can explain it. Explain the natural birth. You can't even explain that when life comes into a baby. I'm out of time, I guess. I hope this has helped you some. I'm going to come back and go through some of this because this ties in to whosoever. It's quoted out of the second chapter of Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But you'll only call on him after you start believing in him. And it's not whosoever, it's posho, the all. And it's part of the all of mankind, which is synecdoche, a part being the whole. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, thank you for truth. Help me, Lord, to be able to explain this to everybody so they can get a hold of it. Lord, I know it's difficult for the world to understand anything like this when they don't want it. In fact, they can't, Lord. Understanding comes from you. Thank you for truth. God, deal with our hearts and crush us under your hand. The only way anyone can believe these things, they have to be crushed. Self has to be crushed out of all of us. Thank you for all things, Lord. Cause us all to learn to be content and to ward away our own desires and push away self. We'll praise you for all things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. That's, that's it's not hard to explain, but it's hard to keep it in a line. What did you say? Okay. Panta is a form of the. I mean, excuse me, a form of all. And this is a form of the, the all. What is what? Okay, well, it's on your paper. Just look at Panta. Panta is a form of all. Panta is a form of all. And... Uh, 
Tan is a form of thee. Tan is a form of thee. Whosoever believes in him shall receive remission of sins. That's you got to look at your chart. Okay, but if it's neuter, who is that? I mean, how is that translate? What is, what does it actually say? Well, let me let me see here. Hold on, let me look at it. Hey, you guys, do y'all see how you need to learn English? I hope you do. Okay. It's right here. Han Tan. Is it Pan Tan? Yeah, it's Panta. Panta. So it's this one, right? Panta, yeah. It's neuter gendered. It's uh, uh, Panta Tan. Tan would have to be the same thing. Tan up here. Tan, T O N. T O N. Is that an O? T O N. Yeah, that's it there. That yeah. Genitive, neuter. No, that's a two. That's not ton. T O N. T O. It's not this O, it's another O. What? No, that's not it. It is down here. Accusative voice. That's accusative. Masculine. What? Can I? May I? Go ahead. It's like, okay, do you all do you all learn how to diagram sentences in school now? They need to. Really helps. Subject, predicate, direct object. This is how we Yeah, I should have put that on the board. The modifiers. Then, then when it was indirect object, the line was like this. Yeah, because it receives but action of the verb. this is what really broke it down. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll put some of that on the board when we run through this. I, I want them to learn to do that. The John 3 So she wanted to know what that meant. Panta, tan. Yeah. 